And now it's time for our next presentation on the Actual Tech Media Virtual Summit. I'm excited to introduce Mr. Brent Meadows, Solutions Architect at Expedia, and Mr. Steve Blow, Technology Evangelist at Zerto. Brent, Steve, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes. Hi, David. How are you, David? How are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for being on. Take it away. Problem. So my name's Steve Blow. I'm the Technology Evangelist at Zerto. Um, so we really want to talk to you about continuous availability and how that equals a competitive advantage. Um, so I'm going to focus first on, on the Zerto technology um, underneath and um, before handing you over to Brent Meadows at Expedient, who's really going to talk to you around how Expedient can help you deliver um, you know, that competitive advantage. So if we look at the platform first, um, there's many use cases for Zerto. Um, However, it is a single platform, um, and there aren't modules that need to be installed for different use cases and things like that. So whatever you're doing with Zerto, we deploy it the same way, and the core of everything we do is continuous data protection. That enables our continuous data replication, our journal-based recovery, and I'll talk about our journal in a bit more detail as we go through, uh, our application consistency groupings, um, and again, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that as we go through, um, and then recently this year, long-term retention as well. We then wrap around that um, orchestration and automation. Um, traditionally, with disaster recovery, uh, you have a separate orchestration tool um, from your replication tool. With Zerto, it's a single tool um, where it's all built in, uh, and this obviously enables you know, the mobility aspects um, uh, and uh, all our integration into the likes of uh, Experience platform. And then lastly, we wrap around that uh, with our analytics platform um, and giving you greater control and visibility of what's going on in your environment as well. So we look at our architecture, it's very straightforward. Um, Zerta can be installed and up and running in just a couple of hours. There's two components, um, typically on-premises, uh, which is the Zerto Virtual Manager, um, of which you have one on each site. Um, and then our virtual replication appliances. Um, so we don't install agents in any VMs or anything like that. We operate solely at the platform or hypervisor level. Um, and obviously we support multiple platforms as well. Um, so we support VMware, we support Hyper-V, um, Azure, AWS, IBM Cloud, uh, uh, and obviously Experience Cloud Platform as well. So if we have a look at traditionally how things have been done, um, how, how workloads are, are traditionally protected. Um, you probably have many applications, but not many of them will be made up of a single virtual machine. Um, and that actually presents a lot of challenges with protection. And traditionally today, you know, when you're performing backups and things like that, you're protecting each virtual machine individually. So maybe you start backing up at you know, 11 p.m. here, uh, your app server starts backing up. Two hours later, maybe your web server starts backing up. Then maybe your DB server, and then finally your file server. But actually, what you end up with is a spread of hours of all of these different components that make up your, your application. And so when you come to recover, you've actually then got to fight to get them all back in a consistent fashion so the application's actually usable. And quite often, that can take longer than the recovery itself. Um, and this is a real big challenge. So one of the things that Zerto um, do uh, to, to obviously change this uh, and make this a lot easier is provide what we call virtual protection groups. And virtual protection groups allow you to group your VMs together so that when we're creating protection um, and protecting these workloads, we are protecting them all to the exact same point in time. So with Zerto, if you, if you recover to one of our points in time, you're recovering that entire application to the exact same point in time, so there's no need to fight to get them all back into a consistent fashion. They're already in that consistent state, um, which obviously makes, um, makes your recovery time a lot lower. Um, and what we'll do is we'll do this for every um, checkpoint, as we call it, that we create in our journal um, and, and ensure, obviously, the consistent recovery. So our journal is a very powerful tool. Um, obviously, as I said, everything we do is continuous, so we're continually protecting your, your um, uh, VMs on the production environment. Um, and we're storing all of those changes that are occurring uh, in a journal, which can hold up to 30 days' worth of data. Um, and within there, we're then inserting checkpoints every five seconds. 
And these points in time, as I said on the previous slide, are points in time which will be consistent across all of the VMs within, um, within that virtual protection group. So you've got incredible granularity here. Um, so one of the good examples of, of where this can be useful right now is ransomware. Um, so in this example, let's say ransomware uh, um, you know, encrypts all of your files. With Zerto, you can actually rewind to the last point in time before ransomware encrypted your files, which will be seconds prior, um, ensuring that your data loss is minimum. Um, and we actually give you granularity to recover individual files from any of these points in time, individual VMs. You could recover the entire virtual protection group, which will be your entire application, or you could even recover your entire site if necessary. So you've got incredible granularity here to ensure that you, you are making uh, or losing the least amount of data in a scenario like this. And, and the key thing here is, obviously, we support these many platforms. So you could have your expedient uh, cloud uh, platform. You could be utilizing on-premises. You could be utilizing Azure, AWS, wherever it might be. The key thing is there to is agnostic um, and ensuring that you have A, availability, but also mobility. And it doesn't matter where you deploy it. It looks exactly the same. So simplicity is really one of the, the core mantras of Zerto. Um, so it doesn't matter whether you're deploying it with Expedient or with, with Zerto or anywhere else. Um, the interface looks identical regardless. Um, and as I said, the key thing here is this is a single platform um, with multiple use cases. Um, disaster recovery is obviously the one we're probably most famous for. Um, but we have backup use cases as well where we can do long-term retention. We obviously have the multi-cloud hybrid cloud support um, because we've, we're obviously agnostic. Um, so migration, therefore, is a, a big use case for Zerto. Um, and there's many other things that people can utilize our platform for. For example, being able to do a test failover, bring up a replica of production without impacting production, for you to do things as simple as Windows update testing before you apply it actually on production. Um, and you can do all of that without any impact, which is obviously uh, uh, a considerable value add. Now, if we look at uh, cloud, obviously, um, you know, people are adopting cloud um, more and more. It's growing. You know, here's some stats from Gartner around that. I'm not going to read through them, but the key message here is, you know, uh, cloud is, is uh, a massive, massive value add for uh, a lot of organizations, you know, and it could be a lot of cost savings involved in there. Um, but having a partner to uh, work with you on that and achieve um, your goals is, is really key to getting the most out of um, uh, you know, that cloud adoption strategy that you might have. And actually, one of the key ones um, is uh, DR as a service. That's a, a really quick win. Get rid of your physical disaster recovery site um, and replace it with a cloud platform where you get a lot more efficiency around scale uh, and costs. Um, you can see here, this is the Gartner Magic Quadrant for um, DR as a service. You can see Expedient on here. Um, and actually, um, a lot of these um, vendors are utilizing Zerto to deliver this capability. So 10 out of the 11 are utilizing Zerto in some form or another um, to, to deliver this capability. Now, obviously, Expedient and Zerto, we've been partners since 2012. Uh, Expedient's now one of our platinum, platinum partners. Um, you know, we've got a very close-knit um, relationship with them. They're actually part of our technical advisory board. Uh, last year, they were our growth partner of the year. Um, and uh, obviously, um, as I've mentioned on the previous slide, are, are positioned very highly within Gartner's Magic Quadrant for DR as a service and have been for some time. Um, and on that, it's probably worth me then handing over to Brent, um, who will go through um, some of your um, uh, some of your uh, questions and things that you might be thinking on how how can um, how can we uh, deliver on you know Zerto's capabilities? Yeah, thanks, Steve. Yeah, so uh, as mentioned before, uh, my name is Brent Meadows. Um, I'm an enterprise solutions architect for Expedient. Uh, my role is to work with clients on the the front end uh, process to design the disaster recovery as a solution, um, among other functions. Uh, to make sure that what we're putting together uh, is going to meet all the, the needs, requirements, constraints, things of that nature. Uh, so what I'm going to do is get the prerequisite, who is expedient, kind of out of the way, and then we'll go into some of the ways we do DR as a service a little bit different 
um, and some of the things that you would want to think about as you are evaluating different service providers um, if you want to do disaster recovery as a service uh, versus it kind of building it on your own internally. So Expedient was founded in 2001. Uh, we are a co-location cloud and managed service provider. Uh, we have our cloud locations in the U.S. in East, Central, and West regions, uh, along with some international locations in Australia, Germany, and Canada. Uh, and we've also been a uh, provider in the VMware uh, vCloud Air Network, vCPP. It's been through a couple different iterations over the years uh, since really its inception. And that's going to be important uh, in the way that you consume licensing from a DR as a service perspective, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, as an overview, kind of the things that we do really surround our cloud platform. Uh, so we take the cloud platform to provide the compute, storage, networking, and really wrap those managed services around it to present a fully featured solution uh, and really figure out what each client needs individually and put those solutions together uh, to fit those needs. And as Steve mentioned, uh, one of the things we're proud of is we have been part of Gardner's Magic Quadrant over the last uh, three years for our disaster recovery as a service. Uh, and we were also awarded uh, VMware's Cloud Partner of the Year for 2018. And when we build our cloud, we really look at kind of the cloud world in two different iterations. Uh, you have your hyperscale providers, which have a lot of features and functionalities, uh, but a lot of times it's up to each individual end user to figure out how to take those pieces and parts and put them together in a solution that fits. Uh, the way we look at the world is we're really focused more around enterprise principal cloud architecture, where we are building all of the resiliency in the backend hardware versus at the application layer. Uh, that way the applications can recover from a hardware failure gracefully uh, using those uh, VMware powered tools. As I mentioned, the platform that we've built on uh, is basically a fully VMware software defined data center stack. Uh, this is important because a lot of times when we're thinking about disaster recovery, we really only focus on getting the data off site and kind of checking that box and being done with it. One thing that you want to keep in mind as you are evaluating how to protect your data and get those disaster recovery plans in place is if you do have to kind of push that big red button and declare a disaster, your workloads are going to have to run on that disaster recovery platform. So whether you're building that internally or you're using a service provider, you really need to make sure that you're aware of what the performance levels, uh, reliability, and availability are going to be on that secondary side when you fell over or if you fell over. Uh, another big component of that is how are you going to fail back if you do experience that disaster? How do you get that data back over to the production side? So the way we really build this uh, is around that fully software-defined data center stack from VMware. Uh, we're using vSAN uh, along with NSX and vCloud Director to present the interface to the end user. Uh, and we're doing all flash storage on this. So when Steve mentioned kind of the replication that's going in near real time over, uh, you really have to have storage on the target side that can consume all of that changed data that you're sending over. And then if you do experience a disaster, be able to run at near the same performance, if not better performance than your production side. And then from a full software stack, this is how we accomplish that. Uh, we layer all of these components on top of the hardware itself uh, to make that fully featured uh, disaster recovery platform. So the thing that we're really wanting to dig down into today and talk about is, is uh, push button disaster recovery. And this is really an expedience way of automating some of the components of disaster recovery uh, and using that orchestration that's built into Zerto to really simplify the process of both failing over and failing back. So what we have here is what many people would consider a pretty standard uh, disaster recovery deployment. Uh, on the production side, you have all of your VMs running, uh, all of your local storage, and your firewall. And you're going to have your own internal IP scheme on the production side. Then we're going to replicate those VMs over uh, via a tool like Zerto to the secondary side. Now, on that secondary side, most usually, unless you're doing uh, stretch layer two via your carrier, things of that nature, you're going to have a completely separate internal uh, IP space from there. And then you're going to have a different firewall as well, 
uh, with a different set of public IP addresses. Now, the challenge here is when you're making changes to your perimeter security with the firewall changes on the production side, you have to replicate those changes to the firewall on the secondary side to make sure those keep in sync. Uh, so if you do have to fail over, you're not troubleshooting, oh, why isn't this web server responding? Oh, I forgot to put this NAT place and rule on my secondary side. So with this, if you have to fail over, those VMs come over, but then you have to change their internal IP addresses to match the secondary site. And then that's the easy part. Getting the data over to the secondary side with tools like Zerto makes it really easy. The challenging part of it is how you get access to those applications to your end users, uh, whether they're internal users, remote users, or uh, end users uh, from a public facing perspective. Normally the way we do this is with public DNS or global load balancing, things of that nature. So as those VMs fell over and you change their internal IP addresses, you then have to go out and update your DNS records to point to the new IP address on the public side. And then as we all know, DNS uh, can take up to eight to 12 hours to propagate across the internet, uh, depending on your configuration of uh, time to live, things of that nature. So while you could fail the data over pretty quickly, uh, it's not really of much use until your end users can actually have access back to that data. So the way that Expedient simplifies this process is the first thing we do is with vSAN storage, we make sure that the data is going to be performant on both sides, uh, whether it's the production side or the secondary site. We're going to have that all flash storage on both sides. Then with the Expedient Enterprise Cloud that we hit on earlier, uh, we're actually using the VMware Software Defined Data Center as an overlay between both physical data centers. Uh, so with that, we're using NSX, uh, vCloud Director, and vRoz operations as one single interface across there. What this allows us to do is actually stretch those internal IP addresses across physical disparate uh, locations so that when a VM does fail over to the secondary side, it does not have to change its internal IP address. So those VMs can come over. Uh, they're on the same Layer 2 network. And using Zerto's virtual protection group, uh, these applications can fail over independently. So a lot of times when we think of disaster recovery, we think of that one big red button that you have to hit to fail your full environment over. Uh, with this solution and being able to stretch that Layer 2 network between the two locations, you can actually fail over individual applications while the replica, uh, other applications are still running on the production side and everybody still thinks they're on a layer two adjacent network. This also allows us to, if you do have that big disaster where it is a full site failure, we're actually replicating the firewall along with the virtual machines using the Zerto software. What this allows us to do is actually transmit the IP addresses from the production side over to the secondary side from a public facing perspective. So instead of having a 8 to 12 hour DNS propagation and getting access back to your applications that way, we're really just doing a 3 to 5 minute BGP reannouncement so that all of those public DNS records, uh, all of your user facing URLs stay the same. So that way you don't have to wait for that uh, failover to happen from a DNS perspective. You really get it near immediately uh, access back to those applications. And then working with a service provider, there are a few different advantages uh, that we'll go through. Uh, those that have been around kind of the VM world for the last uh, 10 years or so will remember around 2012 or 2013, uh, VMware attempted to change the licensing model from a uh, per socket based licensing model to a per gig of RAM uh, powered on licensing model. Uh, that was met with some uh, discontent from the user base, and they reverted back to the per socket base. Well, with the uh, VMware cloud provider licensing model, uh, we are actually have always been on that per gig of RAM powered on uh, licensing model. And especially in disaster recovery, this makes it really cost efficient because you're only paying for those workloads that are up and running. So the way that Expedient does the secondary side, on the hardware resources, we don't do any oversubscription. So all of the RAM CPU disk is there and immediately available uh, full-time for each individual client. But 
each client is only paying for the VMware licensing for powered on systems. So you may have a domain controller running over there, maybe some SQL servers that you're doing application level log shipping or always on availability groups between the two. Uh, the, the rest of your VMs that are just being replicated via Zerto are basically just powered off VMs. Uh, so you're not going to pay for the VMware licensing for those until you actually power them on either in the event of an actual disaster and or uh, just testing for your disaster recovery plan. Uh, the way we do that is two ways. You can do that actual failover so that you fell over everything to the secondary side, uh, or you can use Zerto's uh, isolated network or bubble network functionality to fail over to your secondary side without actually affecting the production systems. So you can have that failover in that isolated network, uh, do all your user acceptance testing that the DR worked, that all your data is there and uh, recoverable, all while still production systems are servicing the end users. And we've used that tool, our uh, orchestration tool of Zerto, to fully automate both the failover of the application groups and that firewall failover to get that public IP address uh, to move to the secondary site. And as Steve mentioned, kind of a consistent user interface, one of the things that we have done with the Zerto uh, portal is we've actually integrated it in with vCloud Director um, under our Expedia Enterprise Cloud. So to get to the Zerto self-service menu, uh, you just go to the hamburger menu of vCloud Director, uh, click the Zerto self-service, and it's going to bring up the uh, portal for you to perform your failover. Um, and this is available on the expedient side and on the customer on-premises side as well. And then from the interface, you can see all of your current RPOs, uh, any IOPS, how many PMs are protected, things of that nature. Um, and there at the bottom right, you can see the big red button to actually perform the failover. So while Expedient does the disaster recovery as a service, uh, it is really a self-service as well uh, that our clients can go in and perform those failovers and tests as needed. So with that, I will open it up to any questions, uh, answers. Uh, while we go through that, you can just kind of see, we mentioned Gartner shows that disaster recovery as a service is a growing uh, trend across the cloud providers. Uh, so I'll just leave some of these testimonials up here as we go through the Q&A. Yeah, great presentation, Steve. Great presentation, Brent. Uh, I see Steve's been actively answering a bunch of questions there that came in uh, during the presentation. So thank you, Steve. Um, let's see, if we, a look at some of these questions uh, and let me just bring up this poll for the audience while we do that that says what additional information would you like about the Zerto and Expedient solution? I'll just call your attention to that poll in the slides window. Um, the first question that came in that really caught my eye here is uh, how is the, the disaster recovery as a service solution managed if we use Zerto and Expedient together? Do, do we uh, talk to Zerto? Do we talk to Expedient? How does that work? Sure. So the Zerto software is kind of the core of the Expedient disaster recovery. Um, so to get the disaster recovery as a service, uh, you could interact with uh, Zerto. You can interact with Expedient. Uh, we work very closely together uh, on those joint opportunities. Uh, and you have a couple of different uh, options for the licensing. Uh, Expedient can provide the Zerto licensing as part of the overall solution, uh, or clients can purchase that software licensing directly from Zerto and use it as part of Expedient's disa managed disaster recovery service. Okay, okay, nice. Uh, this is a question that I bet applies to everyone, and that is uh, how can we test it? Uh, in, for example, if we want to do a proof of concept, uh, how, do, how would that work? Sure, so you can reach out to Expedient. So we do, uh, of course, live demos. We have test drive environments uh, for both EEC and disaster recovery as a service. Uh, we can do fully fledged proof of concepts. Uh, really depends on the requirements. Uh, we have many options available. Okay, okay, nice. And another question here is about uh, Zerto. Uh, and, you know, is it a disaster recovery solution? Is it a backup solution? Or, or is it both? Um, so I, I can take that one. So um, Zerto, as I said, everything we deliver is through continuous data protection. Um, so yes, you could replace your backup solution with, with Zerto. Um, but in order to perform the backups, we're using our continuous data protection, at which point you get disaster recovery as well. Um, so the idea with Zerto is, is you're converging, you know, the traditional DR and backup use cases, which were traditionally uh, um, delivered through multiple solutions uh, into a single solution. Um, so the answer is both, but obviously um, 
you know, we're doing it uh, a slightly different way by delivering it through continuous data protection with greater granularity and no impact on production. And kind of remove that human element from, uh, we can repeatedly test it uh, in a very consistent manner so that when you're going through your testing and you get that automation built into it, once that time comes where you actually have to declare a disaster, you know it's going to work and it's not going to be different or unique every time you fell over. It's going to be that same consistent experience uh, because you've automated all those pieces in place. Nice, nice. Well, um, Steve and Brett, I think we've covered uh, so many questions. Steve has answered a ton of questions there in the, in the questions box as well. So uh, really great presentation. Thank you so much for being on the event today. Yep, thanks David, thanks for Thank having you us. for having us.